says that when you see a person who is naked or destitute of food, a person who is suffering or in need, who needs some kind of help, you're supposed to help them. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. I've heard many Christians actually say that works are not that important, that it's based upon what you believe in and what your faith is in God. However, that's not completely accurate. And the reason why I say that is because in Revelations chapter 2, verse 21 through 24, it actually states, my friends, that Jesus, whenever he returns, he will judge the churches, and he will judge those who believe in him based upon their works as well as their faith. That is correct. Faith without works is dead. In this world, we see a lot of misery and a lot of pain go down. We can watch the news simply to see that there are a lot of people, a lot of women and children, as well as innocent men who are being hurt due to this war. There's a lot of people that are at this time, while George Bush Jr. is spending billions of taxpayer money to have his egotistical war. There are children in many different countries, including our own, that are actually starving as we speak, been starving for years. There's people out there who have worked all their life and studied and worked and restrained themselves from just going completely insane in the society that they've been brought up in, trying to do the best they can. However, they're not able to get the adequate education that they seek, that they have so struggled to get. There's people out there who are trying every day to do everything they can. Christians will have us believe that Jesus Christ is God and that for some reason God felt it would be beneficial to himself to be born of a virgin, come to this earth, live, be chased by enemies, and then in the end tortured so he himself could be crucified on a cross as a man. Allegedly, according to Christians, God cannot sin. He cannot do any wrong because he is holy. However, according to Christians, God can step side the situation and simply manifest himself into a Jewish man and walk around in the desert for a little while, do a couple magic tricks, and then be crucified and take upon the sins of the world. And being that he's God, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten self and basically a fit of suicide. Now I don't know what goes through the mind of people who believe in this kind of stuff, but one thing I do know is that most people who tell me these stories, there's two types of perspectives that I see when I look at people that talk like this. They either look at me with a hollow, empty, zombie-like look, as though they're completely dead to the world, that they have no consciousness of their own, that they have become a programmed robot, conditioned by religion and society and government. Other people who say it seem like they're hyped up on some kind of dopamine, like they're on narcotics. Jesus died for your sins, and he bleeds for you. He was whipped and tortured. Don't you understand? God loves you, and he came to this earth so he could be brutalized for the wrongdoings of myself as well as you, even though we weren't even born yet. Now, one of the ironies of this whole situation is that Christians will tell you up and down that we have free will, that our lives are not predestined, that our existence is not written in stone. 
However, in the same sentence, they will tell you that we are sinners, although Christ, God, came to the earth and died for us. He died for you before you were even born. You didn't have a choice whether he died or not. They claim that it's a gift. But what if you don't ask for a gift? What if you don't wish to receive a gift? Can I tell God you keep your gift? I don't want you to murder yourself for what you consider my wrongdoings. Of course not. If it is in fact true what Christians say that Christ died on the cross for my sins, then I really have no choice in that at all, do I? I don't. Because I wasn't there. I wasn't there to restrain or stand in the path of Jesus Christ to tell him not to do that. So it's unfair. It's unfair for me to commit to something that I wasn't even born or privy to. Now some people will say, well, God is God, and whether you think it's unfair or not, it doesn't matter. But it does matter because it affects what you call free will. It affects how one can perceive this mythical character that you believe in. You're telling me that before I was even born that I had no free will, that I was born a sinner and I had no choice in the matter. And then you're telling me that way back in the day 2,000 years ago, some man who is supposedly God went against my free will and my choices before I was even existing to decide if I want him to die or not. And now you tell me that although all this is what I said goes against your free will concept, you'll then tell me that whenever I die, depending on how God judges me or how he sees me as a human being, will determine if I go to hell or heaven. Keep in mind, I don't have the free will nor the choice to choose which place I would want to go to. I don't even get to test drive either heaven or hell to see which I like better or if I like any at all. So when you say this, I don't know where your free will stands and where your free will falls. Seems like a bunch of horseshit to me. The Bible says that religious people, people who are believers, are supposed to go out, be willing to give their shirt off their back, give the things that they own, don't hold on to material things, and don't trust the flesh. Yet Christians put their families and their friends above all, and Christians will turn away from the stranger and the person who is a non-believer or of a different religion if that person isn't willing to allow themselves to be controlled. By you doing that, you allow me no free will. You have already made the choice in your heart and in your mind to have nothing to do with people like me. You've already made the decision before I had a choice. Well, as you all know, I'll be making more videos, and I hope you enjoy and understood the point that I've made. You've been listening to Brett King.